Uh, we are going to extend the build-in hold that we are presently in, the three-hour build-in hold, for an extra hour. The crew has a wide variety of uh, breakfast items to choose from, ranging from cold cereal to steak and eggs, juice, milk, and other beverages. From, from left to right, uh, we have uh, mission specialist uh, George Pinky Nelson. Nelson earned a Ph.D. in astronomy from the University of Washington in 1978 and he's flown twice as a mission specialist. Uh, pilot Dick Covey, 42, he flew as a pilot on 51I mission aboard Discovery at the end of August uh, and uh, beginning of September in 1985. Commander Rick Houck, uh, very experienced. Uh, Dave Hilmers, uh, mission specialist. And Mike Lounge, uh, mission specialist, completing the, the crew. Even though we have been holding, uh, we have continued with some of the tasks that uh, need to be conducted. The, they're in the process of putting on the pressure suits that the, uh, the crew will wear on uh, future missions. This particular suit room, there's uh, mission specialist Pinky Nelson, uh, who uh, has on his launch and entry helmet uh, Dave Hilmers, who is in the process of uh, completing his uh, suiting up process uh, as well. In the foreground, uh, Commander Rick Houck uh, in the, uh, the process of putting on his pressure suit. and. Uh, then in the background, uh, you can see uh, uh, mission specialist Mike Lounge uh, waving at the camera there, uh, and the, the other crew uh, around the room. I was just, just going to ask somebody if I should do that. And we fight to emerging from the elevator and uh, on their way out the door now, led by uh, security. The uh, commander, Rick Cox, pilot uh, uh, Covey, uh, Mike Lines, uh, Dave Comers, and Pinky Nelson, uh, followed by Don Putty, uh, who is the head of the, uh, uh, the flight to uh, uh, office in uh, the Johnson Space Center crowd of news media representatives uh, also uh, there to, uh, to document their leaving. The, uh, the crew now in the, uh, the Astro van and preparing to uh, close the door. The Astro van now on the, uh, the pad surface and the uh, crew ready to uh, get out. They'll be met by uh, a couple of the closeout crew uh, uh, technicians. This is Shuttle Launch Control at T-minus 2 hours, 27 minutes, and counting. Commander uh, Rick Houck uh, in the white room uh, where he is completing the suiting up process. Uh, obviously, uh, had either brought along or was handed a, uh, uh, a gag uh, set of glasses, in, uh, uh, which he did try on there. Uh, the uh, team helping take off the protective booties which have been on the, uh, the boots that he wears as part of the pressure suit, shaking hands with the, uh, the closeout crew, 
And uh, obviously, uh, being wished luck. Copy. CMQC, OTC, step 410. Copy. Dave was a U.S. Marine pilot prior to joining NASA, and he logged more than uh, 1,500 hours. Uh, long count follows. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is shuttle launch control at T minus 20 minutes, uh, 48 seconds and counting. Uh, we're just uh, a few seconds away now from the uh, T minus 20 minute hold and we will stop the clock at that point. Uh, flight uh, MTD on air ground one. I copy and they're moving to the west. Okay, and you're still uh, go. Uh, engineering director. Uh, engineering, I'm the engineering director. Uh, I have pulled the technical community and you will have our consensus to proceed with this launch. Good luck and Godspeed. Copy, KSC Safety and Quality Director. This is the walkway used by the astronauts to enter the orbiter. In case of an emergency, the arm can be placed back yeah, into position the, uh, within about 15 seconds. Okay, we copy. Coming up on the four minute uh, point in the count, the orbiter flight control surfaces such as elevon, speed brakes and rudders are now being moved through a three pre-programmed pattern. All three engines now being moved in a pattern to verify their readiness to uh, uh, support the ascent flight control. After going through their paces, they'll be aligned to their start position. Coming up on the two minute point in our countdown. T minus two minutes and counting. The orbiter computers have positioned the vent doors. Uh, T minus 31 seconds. We have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's four redundant computers have assumed. T minus 23 seconds and counting the SRB nozzle profile, T minus 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, we're go for main engine start, 7, 6, we have main engine start, 3, 2, 1, 0, and liftoff, liftoff, Americans return to space as Discovery clears the tower. Roger roll, Discovery. Crew confirms roll program, Houston now controlling. Three engines at 104%. Three good APUs, three good fuel cells. Standing by to begin throttle down to 65%. Engines throttling down now to maintain uh, a certain speed as the spacecraft passes through max Q. Five percent now. Ending by to see engines begin to throttle back up at about fifty nine seconds. Let's 
Mark one minute, velocity 2300 feet per second, altitude 5.9 nautical miles, downrange distance 3 nautical miles. Discovery, go at throttle up. Roger, go. Discovery given a go at throttle up, three engines at 104 percent, velocity 3200 feet per second, altitude 10.8 nautical miles, downrange distance 8 nautical miles. Five seconds from solid rocket booster separation. One minute, 45 seconds, three engines at 104%. Velocity, 4,800 feet per second, altitude, 20 nautical miles, downrange distance, 19 nautical miles. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Solid rocket boosters have separated. Two minutes, 20 seconds. Three engines still running, 104%. Discovery Houston, your go for the pre-deploy checkout.
This is really a pretty satellite. Uh, really some gorgeous views out the window through the deployment. And I hope we captured a lot of that on film. And there you see it, uh, very smooth separation. Uh, we heard nothing and felt nothing in the cabin when that separated. Looks great, Mike. Uh, deployment from our point of view, and uh, uh, we understand it's well on the stage is still thinking it's by now. Okay, Dave, thank you. Rise and shine, boys. Time to start doing that shuttle shuffle. You know what I mean? Hey, here's a little song coming from the billions of us to the five of you. Rick, start them off, baby. The Hawkster to you.
happy about that. And I'm talking on a piece of cotton for that set of folks. And they'll be happy about that. This is Mission Control. The uh, procedure worked. The antenna dish is locked in. And the uh, antenna arm is being moved in to the payload bay. Discovery Houston, good morning. How are you doing? Great tunes. You're loud and clear. Okay, we're ready to run this experiment uh, by Mr. Lloyd Bruce. Uh, McDonald Douglas Corporation helped him uh, put this experiment together. And uh, it's a very interesting experiment in metallurgy. He has uh, established four titanium wire grains enclosed in these uh, vacuum tubes. There's a power supply here with a series of switches. Now we've got cameras set up that uh, will let you see this. When I throw an uh, electric current through this wire, it's going to heat it up above the melting point of the titanium in the case of these first two tubes. And then uh, the re-solicitation uh, of that uh, material may uh, be different in weightlessness than it is on, uh, on Earth. Uh, Mr. Bruce will be doing a similar experiment on Earth to compare the results with uh, what we get here today. Let's see. 
the intention of this experiment is? Is to heat up a titanium alloy in a gravity-free environment and observe what uh, effects will happen to the strength of the metal and grain size. What do you expect to be the effects? Uh, I'm hoping for a stronger metal and a more pure metal, or rather alloy. And here we go with wire number two. Doesn't look like it has the same amount of curl, does it, Lloyd? No. Huh? It's not curling as bad as this one. No, it's not. Thank you very much for that letter. I think uh, he was expressing the cares and thoughts of a lot of Americans. That was very nice. I 
need uh, three hands to do this, so DLT Covey will land one here. And now all I'm doing is, is retracting the plug on the one side to allow the solution to mix in. The Discovery's payload bay facing the Earth. Well, we're passing over the Cape now, uh, of course, Houston, and um, I know my, well, I think my wife and daughter are down there, so please give them a hello for me. We'll be sure to. Discovery passing along at about 17,500 miles per hour. Uh, instrument, instrumentation and communications officer Harry Black uh, now has uh, got a good view of the uh, peninsula of Florida as Discovery passes over.
Well, let's just go on a trip in here and let's see what we find. You still getting this okay, Houston? That's affirmative, Dick. Okay, first thing that uh, you come across is uh, food and, uh, you know, there's all kinds of nuts and, uh, and M&Ms and stuff and, and we pack those in there in case uh, FAO schedules us for a real late lunch like we did today. It's coming in real clear, and you got a bunch of people applauding down here. We really appreciate that. Thank you. Discovery Houston, we're with you through Hawaii. We'd like to take just a few moments today to show you some of the sights that we've been so privileged to do over the past several days. As we walk along with you, many emotions swell up in our hearts. Joy for America's return to space. Gratitude for our nation's support in difficult times. Thanksgiving for the safety of our crew. Reverence for those who sacrificed and made our journey possible. Gazing outside, we can understand why mankind has looked towards the heavens with awe and wonder since the dawn of human existence. We can comprehend why our countrymen have been driven to explore the vast expanse of space. And we are convinced that this is the road to the future. The road that Americans must travel if we are to maintain the dreams of our Constitution. To secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. As we, the crew of Discovery, witness this earthly splendor from America's spacecraft, Less than 200 miles separates us from the remainder of mankind. In a fraction of a second, our words reach your ears. But lest we ever forget that these few miles represent a great gulf, that to ascend through this seemingly tranquil sea will always be brought with danger. Let us remember the Challenger crew, whose voyage was so tragically short. With them, we shared a common purpose. With them, we shared a common goal. At this moment, our place in the heavens makes us feel closer to them than ever before. Those on the challenger who have flown before and seen these sights, they would know the meaning of our thoughts. Those who had gone to view them for the first time, they would know why we set forth. They were our fellow sojourners. They were our friends. Today, up here where the blue sky turns to black, we can say at long last to Dick, Mike, Judy, to Ron and Al, and the Christian Greg. Dear friends, we have resumed the journey that we promised to continue for you. Dear friends, your loss has meant that we could confidently begin anew. Dear friends, the spirit and your dreams are still alive in our hearts. And he has been the discovery back over to you. And discovery? On behalf of the Challenger families and all of us down here, it sure does feel good to see the Challenger mission continue in America back in space. Well, we fired our main engines and our boosters just to get off the ground now. Man, they heard us for miles, we really put out a damn. 
I think maybe we need to start running that uh, Beach Boys music here. I wish we had uh, some Beach Boys music to run for you. Now the echo is very bad and it's hard to hear as we're going out the door to the beach. Hey, one more time. I wish we had uh, the Beach Boys tape to play for you.
Okay, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about uh, the flight station up here. We've seen an awful lot of the experiments going on uh, down in the mid-deck and also out-the-window photography. Of course, going uh, up in launch and coming back home, uh, the stations, the commander station that I'm sitting in and the pilot station to my right, as well as uh, Dave Helmer's uh, seat, which is right in between us. It's not up right now, but he'd be sitting right here where he can monitor both of us, are the ones that we control the uh, shuttle from. Let me point out a few of the uh, controls that we have. First of all, between my legs, I have a stick uh, like you would find in an airplane. I'm going to move it up so you can see it better. Here I've got my left hand on it, although I would normally fly with my right. And like a normal airplane stick, it can control the shuttle by rolling it left or right, dipping the wings as it were, pitching up or down, moving the nose up or down. Also, when we're on orbit using the reaction control system, we can yaw the shuttle left or right by twisting the stick this way, and that slices the nose left or right. When we're in aerodynamic flight coming back in, uh, the yaw function is not, uh, not used, however. Now, we also have controls for the orbital maneuvering system engines, the ones that we'll do our deorbit burn with. Dick uh, Covey over in the pilot side has most of the plumbing valves. Down here in my lower right, however, are the switches that we use to enable, uh, or as we say, arm the Ohm's engines. And then by working with the displays here and pushing some of our keys, uh, we can actually allow the computers to fire the deorbit engines for the prescribed amount of time. This is uh, probably not a one-man operation, as you can see, and we intend to help each other just like uh, Pinky's helping Rick here. Uh, as you can see, Lacey, it's, uh, it's a struggle to get into these things. It doesn't take very long, and they are warm. There's no doubt about that. Okay, loud and clear. I understand you're through uh, Tedris and uh, you're not getting any more downlink. That's correct. Rick, you have a go for payload bay door closing. Proud to go. Outstanding. Copy nominal. Discovery Houston, go for deorbit burn. Roger. This is Mission Control Houston. We're standing by for the burn in two seconds. Propulsion Systems Officer reports we're burning and looking good. Houston Discovery. Discovery Houston with you at Yargity. Go ahead. Roger. The burn was good. Uh, no residuals. However, at ignition, you may have seen the uh, fess of app out temp went high. We Mission Control on NASA Select Television. We're now taking a view from helicopter over the uh, landing area, and we're looking at some of the 380,000 people 
gathered for the landing of Discovery. That cap that call from Capcom. I can see Edwards from here, Houston. It sure looks gorgeous. I'm sure it does, Rick. We've now acquired a signal, a video signal from Vandenberg of Discovery as she passes over the California coastline. Discovery at 101,000 feet, velocity 3,700 feet per second, descending at a rate of 230 feet per second. Discovery now coming out of 40,000 feet, velocity 871 feet per second. Discovery Houston, recommend a vector transfer to the BFS. Discovery Houston, on center line, on glide slope. Winds are calm. Looks real pretty. All right. At 3,000 feet, Discovery will execute her pre-flare maneuver. She's now at about 6,500 feet, descending descending at a rate of 180 feet per second. Speed 550 feet per second. down. The gear down and locked. The report from Mission Control. Main gear touchdown. Commander Hop now rotating the nose down, standing by for nose gear and touchdown. We'll stop, Discovery. Welcome back. A great ending to the new beginning. Thanks a lot. On the uh, runway, runway 17, here at the Dryden Flight Research Facility, Vice President George Bush has arrived out at the landing site uh, with the Vice President, uh, NASA Administrator James Fletcher, and the head of the shuttle program, Rear Admiral Richard Truly. The uh, access stairs are up against the side of the orbiter. And the crew discovery now coming down the steps, waving a large American flag. Commander Rick House being greeted by Dick Truly and NASA Administrator Fletcher.